in this chemokinetic podcast about hydrocarbon oxidation. We will discuss the ignition behavior of large hydrocarbons with special emphasis on the low temperature chemistry. In the study of large hydrocarbons, an important ignition behavior emerged. For larger temperatures, above 1000 K, the normal ignition behavior was observed, meaning that there was slow reactive behavior and then a sudden increase. However, as the initial temperature decreases, an extra feature is observed. An ignition behavior is started, but then is delayed before the real ignition behavior is observed. This is related to the cool flame phenomena, or low temperature combustion. Just as hydrogen and simple alkane oxidation has several regimes of behavior, so do larger hydrocarbons. At high and intermediate temperatures, there is a simple radical chemistry of, for example, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane. These are significant branching reactions which feed the oxidation process. At the intermediate temperatures, HO2 and H2O2 are significant intermediates. At lower temperatures, RO2, the alkane version of peroxy radicals, becomes important. It will be shown later that this regime is very important for the unique behavior of large hydrocarbon combustion chemistry. This slide shows a graph of regimes as a function of temperature for the two compounds of the primary reference fuel, N-heptane and isooctane. This shows that there is a structural dependence on ignition behavior. This slide shows that there is a significant different species selectivity at lower temperatures as opposed to higher temperatures. At low temperatures, oxygenated species such as ketones, aldehydes, peroxides, and cyclic ethers are predominant. This shows that the species resulting from the addition of oxygen are very important for low temperature chemistry. At high temperatures, the radical decomposition species are predominant, such as alkenes. High temperature chemistry is the chemi chemistry of bond breaking. Basically, bonds split by simple decomposition or hydrogens are abstracted. This decomposition abstraction process can form radicals to initiate combustion. A radical being formed by abstraction with another small radical, such as hydroxyl radical, peroxide, or atomic oxygen. Another alternative is the decomposition of a large hydrocarbon into small radicals. For hydrocarbons, one radical pathway, especially at high temperatures, is the loss of an additional hydrogen, or even a large carbon group, to form a double bond, an alkene. The presence of alkenes is significant in high temperature chemistry. The first two reactions are decompositions to form alkyl radicals. The first is done with the loss of a hydrogen by breaking a carbon-hydrogen bond, and the second with the loss of a large alkyl group breaking a carbon-carbon bond, with the loss of another alkyl radical. The third reaction is the formation of an alkyl by the abstraction of a hydrogen by another radical, generically here represented by species A. The formation of an alkene is a significant part of high temperature chemistry. This slide shows electron pushing steps to form an alkene from an alkyl group. The major concept in electron pushing is that a bond is made up of two shared electrons. If there is a single electron on an adjacent carbon atoms, then they can combine to form a bond. By the same principle, the bond can split up into two radicals on each atom. This slide shows two possibilities to form a double bond from an alkyl radical. Both lines are essentially the same. On the carbon next to the radical carbon, either a carbon-hydrogen top line or a carbon-carbon bond is broken to form radicals. This creates two adjacent carbon radicals. These two lone radicals can then combine to form a bond, namely the second bond of a double bond. Hydroxyl radicals are an important part of oxidation chemistry. Hydroxyl radicals can react with alkenes to form aldehydes an important precursor to carbon monoxide, which in turn leads to carbon dioxide, one of the equilibrium products. The key step, once again, is that the bond is made up of two electrons. In this case, one of the bonds, carbon-carbon double bond, rearrange with the bonds of the hydroxyl radical, OH. First, a carbon-oxygen radical bond and a carbon-hydrogen bond is formed. Then, with a second rearrangement, 
the carbon-carbon bond is broken, and an aldehyde and a carbon radical is formed.